3D printed supports are annoying. There's not really a way around it. They waste my time, they waste filament, they have ruined my marriage. Just kidding, checking if you're still listening. And most of all, they are just at so annoying to get off of your model whenever all you wanna do after your model is done printing is like basically put it on your head and mess around with it. But no, you've got these stupid 3D printed supports on there. They're a necessary evil for most of the models that we need to print in 3D printing, but they don't have to be. In this week's video, I'm going to show you how I remove all of my 3D printed supports and while we're at it, I'm going to show you how you can make them even easier to remove from your models to begin with. Most of the time, I can even remove them with my bare hands. <laughs> Why does that sound sexual? <laughs> to get your supports to do this, we're going to have to start before we print. But don't worry, I'll have some tips and talk about the tools I use to remove my supports later on in the video. So right now on my script, it says that I'm going to jump into Cura. And I am in Cura right now. But I also have the thing on my script that says that this is a talking head portion of the video. And all I can think of is the talking head song. So I'm going to put myself into the talking heads video for just like two seconds. So please humor me. And okay, now we're back in Cura. <laughs> so like I said, I have a couple other videos on how I orient certain prints like helmets and armor it really is important to note that the easiest way to remove supports from your models is to orient them in a way where you have less supports to begin with and figuring out the best way to orient your print it's not an exact science you might think that a certain way is going to be the most efficient way but until you slice it and see how long it's going to take and how much filament it's going to take you probably never know just kind of mess around as I always say just do, do you have fun with this hobby. So whenever you've got your model situated in a way that you think you're satisfied with, well, let's mess around with the print settings that are on the left. You're probably familiar with things like your layer height, print speed, and your info in your settings. They're probably the things that you pay the most attention to whenever getting ready to slice your print. But what if I told you that there is a way to change the infill percentage of your supports? Well, there is a way and I'm going to show you right now. <laughs> so if you don't see the support density underneath your support settings, like I have here, go up to the support search option and search for support density. Check that box whenever it comes up. And once you click out of it, you'll see now that you have a field that allows you to change the percentage of the infill of your supports. Wow. I used to print with my support infill set at about 10% for the longest time. And that actually produced really easy to remove supports. But I had a couple of eagle eye commenters tell me that they saw my settings and said that they have successfully printed with as low as 5% infill. And I started doing that a few weeks ago with a really good success with really good success. Yeah, that, that's English. Like I'm telling you, I used to dread the support removal process. And now with these settings, it might as well take me less than three minutes at the most to get stuff off of my model. And obviously I can already hear you guys typing with a lower support infill, the higher the risk is going to be for our supports failing. So I would first recommend setting your supports at something around like 15% if you're not comfortable with 10% just yet. And then kind of keep dialing it back from there until you get to a something that'll work for you. And I haven't had any models fail yet with 5% infill just yet, but I'm sure it's going to happen. But the risk is worth it to me to not need to take a muscle relaxer after I wrestle with the supports off of my helmets. I even had a couple of you suggest that you can print with even lower than 5% support infill. And I, I'm still not there yet, but I think I'm going to give it a go eventually whenever my 3D printers are, you know, actually working. <laughs> and as with everything in 3D printing, if your supports are failing, then there's probably something larger going on with your printer that's causing this to happen. Another thing you can do in the settings to make your supports easier to remove is to switch the support structure of your supports. Again, if you don't see this option under support, then just go underneath the search function again, click that box, and you should see a drop down box that will allow you to choose between different settings. In my case, I use the line structure and I find these the easiest to remove as they aren't really as complex as something as like the grid pattern or a geometric triangle or all these other weird patterns. But feel free to leave them down in the comments below if you have some patterns that you think work even better than the lines one. Again, this increases the risk that your supports might fail. And while I haven't had any supports outright fail with this method, my nozzle does tend to catch on these supports just a little bit more often than not. But I really think that this is more due to the fact that my printer wasn't dialed in, it wasn't extremely level. And I think that was really the problem, not necessarily the supports themselves. So those are the settings that I use for producing essentially weak supports that are easy to remove. Personally, I would recommend using a raft as your build plate adhesion as it gives the support somewhere to better grip onto as well as to melt into. It's also easier for me to pry up after the fact to get that print off of the bed with a nice, you know, big flat raft. I'm not really worried about getting any of the print broken in the process, though you can definitely achieve this with other adhesion methods and definitely let me know if you do. I've also used things like tree supports in the past that made supports easy to remove too, and they don't really require as much fiddling around with your settings. So that's definitely another route that you can take. As for removing these things, once your prints are finished, I use a few different tools to do this and they're all pretty cheap or they already come with your printer. Plus the clippers are what I, and I'm assuming most people go to first whenever they're trying to remove supports off of their prints and they can get into fairly 
tight spots. There's a reason that they are the most widely used tool to get supports off. I also sometimes will take them and wedge them under supports to get them to, you know, kind of pry up as well. And just be careful when you do this because you might end up with a little bit of plastic in your eye. And I have 100% not done that before. <laughs> oh! <laughs> If you're worried about getting support pieces in your eye, you could always put like safety glasses on, but I actually usually wear prescription glasses whenever I'm working, so they usually just bounce right off of those. But while we're here, can we talk about the fact that even though I'm super careful with trying to get these little 3D printed pieces off of my models, there's still like little bits of 3D printed support all over my basement, in my garage, everywhere. And if I'm not wearing like my Crocs or something, there is going to be a piece of like 3D printed material in my foot. And if you think stepping on Legos is bad, wait till you step on a piece of of flung off support from one of your 3D prints because, oh my God, does that hurt? <laughs> Wedging the clippers onto these supports will usually get the job done for most of the things that I'm trying to get off of a print. But if that's not working, I'll usually take a metal spatula. I got this off of Amazon, but you could also use like a butter knife, I guess, and wedge it underneath the little string of support that you have. Along the same lines, sometimes you'll have prints like this Mandalorian helmet I printed a while back with like small ridges or small gaps that you've put really small supports into it. And I go over this in my custom supports video that I'll link up above for you guys. To get these out of there, I usually use one of these little metal hook things that I got from Harbor Freight. These things are awesome and I don't know what I did without them, but they're great to dig into these small spaces like this little Bo-Katan shin piece that I have here. And they also come in handy when you're doing post-processing on your prints as well. There have been many, many times that I have used some of that Bondo paste and just got it a little bit too much into those finer details. And these hook tools are a great thing to get to dig out of those little detail lines. The last thing that I'd recommend for removing supports might surprise you, but it's a wood burning tool or a soldering iron. I love to take my soldering iron and lightly run it along the bottom or whatever portion of the print was closest to the print bed to partially melt the filament for a smoother finish. This usually happens a lot because I use rafts to do my prints and that'll leave a little bit of a like kind of grungy area underneath the bottom of your print. It does take some finesse and some practice so I recommend doing this in a spot on the print that is not easily noticeable to get used to it. And also I like to use the barrel of my soldering iron because I find that that doesn't get nearly as hot as the tip and it also gives me a little bit of surface area to work with whenever I'm trying to smooth things down. The bonus is you can also use this tool to weld together seams on your prints if you like to print things into smaller pieces and glue them back together. I go over this method in one of my Bo-Katan videos in the past and I will link that up above for you guys, but it's pretty simple. You basically just take the tip of your soldering iron and kind of go back and forth and lightly weld over it, kind of like you're welding with, you know, metal, but you're just fusing plastic together. But make sure you're wearing a respirator if you do this because anytime that you're melting plastic, you should just be on the cautious side and make sure you've got a respirator on to make sure you're not breathing in any nasty toxic fumes that may be coming off of it. Oh yeah, and one more thing that I forgot to add, you might need one of these little spatula things to get your print actually off of the bed. And that probably should have came with your printer, but if not, they're easy to find at stores like Harbor Freight and Lowe's. They just look like this and they're like little like putty knives to get things off of. I have like three because I keep losing them and I keep finding them again. The more the merrier to have those around, in my opinion. And that's it. That's all of the tips and tricks and my tools that I use to get my supports easy to come off of my prints. I hope that this video helped you out in some way and please let me know down in the comments if you have another way of making your supports easier to remove or if you have like a secret tool that you use. I actually found out about this hook tool from Galactic Armory and honestly I don't know what I would do without these tools so please let me know what your tips are down below. I've even seen some interesting videos where they basically made a ramen like texture out of the supports and they basically crumbled off the model and in, into the person's hand so I really am interested to try that on the future as well. Whenever my prints are back up and running because both of them need maintenance but that's that's owning a 3D printer. <laughs> As always, guys, thank you so much for watching and for commenting and liking and subscribing and all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, my ass. Oh, my God. <laughs>